Hi, my name is Tony Belias, and you're watching ILearnThings.com, Episode 7, Introduction to LibreOffice. If you've been following along with this series of screencasts, you might be familiar with open source office suites like OpenOffice.org. Today, I'm going to introduce you to an alternative to OpenOffice.org that came onto the scene in 2010 called LibreOffice. OpenOffice.org and LibreOffice share many similarities, and if you're familiar with OpenOffice.org, you'll not have any trouble moving to LibreOffice. The reason they are so similar is because LibreOffice is a fork of the OpenOffice.org project. Because this fork happened relatively recently, OpenOffice.org and LibreOffice are more similar than different at this time. As time goes on, the differences may be more significant. The strong community of open source developers has put their efforts behind the LibreOffice project, and it has seen contributions from the likes of Novell, Red Hat, and Canonical. LibreOffice has become a significant project and in many ways has become the successor to OpenOffice.org. As such, future episodes of this podcast will cover LibreOffice instead of OpenOffice. This does not mean that you'll have to switch in order to follow along. And if you're happy with OpenOffice.org, then continue using it and for most of the tutorials I present, it will not make much of a difference. On January 25, 2011, the Document Foundation released the first stable release of LibreOffice version 3.3. This version saw a number of new features which were not present in OpenOffice. The press release announcing the release noted nine of the community's favorite. Importing SVG files, which is my personal favorite and I'll likely cover this topic in a future episode. Formatting title pages in Writer. Navigator tool for Writer. Improved ergonomics for Calc. Importing works and Lotus Word Pro documents. Bundled extensions. PDF support and importing, slideshow presenter console, report builder. So then now that you're a little familiar with the background, let's talk about installing LibreOffice. LibreOffice is licensed under the terms of the LGPL version 3 or later. And this means that you're free to use it for personal and commercial use. You're free to copy it and give copies away and you're free to modify and redesign the source code and to create derivative works. To obtain LibreOffice, just go to the LibreOffice.org website. Uh, you'll see a download link here, just click on that. Before we actually download the packages though, let's check the system requirements by clicking on this link. Uh, LibreOffice is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Since I'm using Ubuntu Linux here, I'll just scroll down to the bottom and it'll give me the uh, Ubuntu Linux system requirements. Now most of these are, are pretty basic, uh, nothing really to worry about, uh, but there is one thing here to note, and that is that certain aspects of the LibreOffice program do require Java, uh, particularly uh, the program base. So that's the first thing that we're going to do before we actually download the packages is install Java since it does not come by default with Ubuntu. Luckily, Ubuntu has some uh, very simple to follow instructions on how to install uh, Java for your system, and I'll include this link in the show notes. You'll see that these commands are uh, meant to be entered in the terminal, so let's go ahead and open up a terminal. Go to Applications, then Accessories, and click on the terminal icon if you're running Ubuntu. And then we can just copy and paste these lines in. The first line, what it does is add a new repository to your uh, list. Uh, repositories are basically uh, where applications are kept that you can download in a Linux system and install them onto your computer. The second line sudo apt-get update will update the list of repositories and uh, basically notifies your 
operating system of which packages or which programs can be installed. Takes a few seconds to update. And then we're ready to go on to the next line. This line right here does the actual installation of the programs. There are two different uh, programs that we want to install, sun-java6-jre and sun-java6-plugin. So go ahead and copy that line and paste it into the terminal. You'll be prompted uh, just to verify that you want to install it, so just hit Y on the keyboard, or capital Y, I should say. And it will download the packages and install them for you. should only take a few minutes. You will get this uh, dialog pop up just to uh, make sure that you confirm with the uh, or that you agree with the license of the Java uh, program. So just click on the OK and the Yes, and it should continue installing. Okay, so now it's done installing and we're ready to proceed to the next line. This last line here, uh, Java's already installed, but now we have to configure it. And that's what this last line will let us do. So just copy that and paste it into the terminal. You'll be asked for um, some choices here, but you can just keep them at the default. So just hit enter. Now that Java is installed, we're ready to download and install LibreOffice. So go back to the website, LibreOffice.org. Click on the home page here. Just click on the download link, and it should automatically detect which version or which operating system you you have installed on your computer, and prompt you to download the correct packages. I'm running Linux, I'm going to select Linux uh, x86 DEB, which is DEB are, is for Ubuntu. x86 means that I am not running a 64 um, bit operating system. Choose my language English. And there are two different packages here. Uh, this second one has, uh, has a bunch of help files in it. Uh, it's also uh, smaller because it doesn't include the entire program, and this one is the base program. So I'm just going to uh, download the base program since I don't necessarily need the help pack. But if you do feel like you need the help pack, it, it's uh, pretty useful. And it does include a lot of information, which will help you learn LibreOffice. So just click on the appropriate link, and it might take a few minutes to download depending on your connection speed to the internet. Okay, it's a large file, so it might take a little while to download, but once you have it downloaded, uh, you can go back to the LibreOffice website, and under the download uh, link in the header here, they have a sub-link for downloading instructions, which will also tell you how to install the uh, LibreOffice program on the operating system of your choice. As you see here, they have instructions for Windows, Macintosh, and Linux. Uh, we will be installing it on Linux, so you can click on that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to install that, so you don't have to read it right now. But if you get uh, lost, this is a good reference that you can use. So go ahead and open up the terminal again. And um, change the directories into your download directory. If you list that directory, you should see a file called, or starting with lib0 underscore 
2 in this case, which is the most recent version of LibreOffice. And what we want to do is, um, it's in a compressed format, so we need to uncompress it. And the command, command to uncompress it is, uh, or the utility we use is tar. So type in tar, uh, dash CXVF, and then the name of the file, and it will uncompress it. After it's done uncompressing it, uh, you should see a new folder in the same directory that we're, that uh, you downloaded the, the uh, tarball to. Uh, go ahead and cd into that directory. And in that directory, you will see the three different or two folders and one document. Uh, the important folder uh, where all the uh, packages are uh, that are needed to install LibreOffice is in the devs folder. So go ahead and cd into that one. And if you take a look at all, uh, take a look at this directory, you'll see that um, it has quite a few different files in there, all ending with the extension .deb. Now, if you're not familiar with the command line, uh, basically what the what this is showing you is exactly what you'd see if you go to uh, places downloads in the LibreOffice folder in the devs folder. You see all these packages right here. Now we're gonna have to install all of them. Now, if you were using the um, GUI interface, uh, you would have to uh, click on each one of these and. Uh, you may even have to uh, click them in the correct order uh, so that they would install correctly. Um, but since we are doing it from com the command line, it's quite a bit easier. Let me show you how to do that. Command to install them is uh, sudo and then dpkg-i star.deb. The star will um, basically issue this command for any file ending in .deb and the .deb files are the ones that we want to install. I'm going to ask you for your password and then it will start installing all the packages. Now this might take a while so just be patient grab a cup of coffee and uh, before you know it it will all be installed. Okay, so we finished installing LibreOffice. There's still one more step that we need to do in order to integrate it with the uh, Linux desktop environment because we want to make sure it appears in all our uh, menus and uh, uh, that all the options are configured correctly. So inside this DEBS or DEBS folder, uh, there's another subfolder called desktop integration. So let's go ahead and CD into that one. And if you take a look at that um, directory, there's another uh, DEB uh, file there. So we can issue the same command uh, that we had before, which was the sudo dpkg-i star.deb. And that will install that package, which will integrate the LibreOffice uh, program into the desktop environment. Okay, so uh, if we go into our applications, menu up at the top here and uh, down to office you should see uh, because open office was uh, previously installed in this particular distribution of uh, ubuntu uh, we still have the open office but we also have the new LibreOffice uh, programs right here so if you click on LibreOffice 3.3 it'll open up the LibreOffice program As you can see from here, it has uh, features that are very similar to OpenOffice, if you're familiar with that. It gives you the uh, ability to write text documents, do spreadsheets, presentations, databases, drawings, edit formulas, have templates, open existing documents, so on and so forth. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, that'll do it for today, and I'll see you next time.